G'day fellas, welcome to a casted game between the Sniper, AoE, who is spawning in the east of the map, playing as the English. His opponent, who spawns in the west of the map, it's Boyt from Age of Empires, Age of Empires M, Age of Mythology rather, uh, and he is going to be playing the Chinese for us. Now, Boyt is a good friend of mine. I'm going to leave a link in the description. He's an Australian content creator, uh, and he's got a YouTube and a Twitch, so I'll be leaving a link in the description to his YouTube channel, so you can check out some of his content as well. But in this game, he is playing the Chinese. Now, I'm a big fan of the Chinese. I absolutely love them. I think they're so much fun. Uh, and Boyt is, is very similar to me uh, in that we both love the Chinese. So we'll take a look at what he's doing in the opening and, and sort of just watch what he manages to do. Uh, we did just watch a, an English game with GUA in it. So we'll focus more on Boyt, who's playing the Chinese here, and have a look at his scouting patterns. Now, so far, his scouting pattern is looking very good. The only suggestion I would make is that you'd probably want to come up and clear this forest because there's always the chance that there's some sheep hiding behind here. Uh, fortunately for him, there are no sheep hiding behind there, uh, but he has managed to pick up a couple of sheep in the middle, so his scouting pattern is 100% on point, uh, doing a great job there. We'll have a look over at his opponent, though. We'll see how the sniper is going, and the sniper going with a different scouting option. Now, scouting is one of those things that you've got to be really careful with when it comes to optimal scouting paths, and the sniper's scouting path is not optimal at all. Uh, Boyt's is by far the better one, because Boyt has now gone out into the middle of the map, and potentially going to be securing all of the sheep yeah so there's three more sheep over here if boyt gets over here and he looks like he's going to he's going to get all the sheep so for anybody wondering what i'm talking about you start off with one starting sheep okay it spawns right here and then you've got two sheep that are nearby like one here and one here and then you've got five sheep that are around your town center like one back here uh normally there'll be like one over here there might be like a, another one like here and then one here and then like one up here uh, there you go you can see it right there uh just underneath that deer Okay, and so that's what the sniper has gone and done. He's gone and collected those sheep, right? And you might think, okay, well, that, that's that's wise. Now he's got plenty of, of food under his town center. Well, yeah, that's right. But then Boyt has gone out into the middle map and he's collected. So there's two flocks of three sheep in the middle of the map. And so now the sniper over here has got, you know, his five sheep, but now Boyt has got six sheep. And then he's got his sheep back in his base that he can also take. Now that's on the condition that the sniper doesn't take them as well. So it's very important to be cognizant of that, that the sniper may come back and take them. Uh, but as a general rule, you want to avoid collecting the sheep around your base, or at least you want to avoid collecting all of the sheep around your base at the beginning of the game. You want to... The very first thing that you should do is really go out onto the map, try and find those neutral sheep, and then come back in. And you can see the difference. Nine sheep here for Boyd. Feeling very good. Going to go back, grab the 10th one over here. 11th one sitting up underneath this deer. Probably grab this one as well because we see the uh, the sheep or the, the scout for the sniper back over at this spot. So Boyd going to be going up to the second age now with the Barbican of the Sun. And, uh, and with this landmark, so this is a defensive landmark, this landmark is going to be enabling him to hold down uh, th this front line. Now, me personally, I would have gone in a different location. I would have gone for my landmark over here. Uh, and the reason why is because I want to protect my gold. But I'm curious to see exactly what he's got in store for us. Uh, or rather, in store for us. Uh, moving a villager out. Now, we can't see a waypoint on this villager, I don't think. But uh, I'm very curious to know what this villager is thinking, doing. He may be looking at doing a bit of a... Oh, no. A little bit of a cheeky... Um, a little bit of a cheeky tower. I think that's what we, what we might potentially be getting here. Um, and now going to be dropping down an archery range, uh, a house as well. Do we have any Imperial official out? No Imperial official out just yet for Boyd. So one of the things that I've been doing in a lot of my games, I did this in my game against Viper, is dropping uh, or getting an Imperial official nice and early and then pumping out units just out of one military production building. You can actually see the waypoint there coming in, going all, all the way across the map. That villager now. Oh boy, you are being very, very cheeky right here. I love it. I love it. Now spotting this gold behind the town center as well. He's going to have spotted that barracks. He knows that the longbowmen are going to be here as well. So opening with a double military production. Uh, opening. Not going to need that gold. Uh, but there is definitely a wood line here that is going to need a little bit of... Uh, going to need a little bit of harassment, Boyt thinks. So going in for a bit of a cheeky play. And I do like it. I do think it's a very cool play for Boyt. Sniper now reaching the feudal age. Uh, as we mentioned before, going up with that all-important council hall. This is something that you see 99.9% .9 of the time, making it an S-tier landmark. It is really that good. 
And Boyd now coming behind the base. Now, one of the things I would love to see from... Yep, there it goes. Uh, outpost getting dropped down right outside of line of sight. If we switch over to the sniper, you can see right there. So, so smart from Boyd. Uh, he would have spotted that there was a house right there. He knows just where the line of sight is going to be finishing. And so he's not going to be alerted to this. So if he was alerted to this, he'd be able to send these military units back. And you can see how slowly this is building. He'd probably be able to stop this. He's only got 32 HP on this villager. But the problem is, now he's going to be able to creep forward. He's going to be able to creep these forward. So he starts one here, then he moves up over onto this one. And then he continues pushing in. And he can get his scout and sit his scout right here, provide line of sight onto this tree line, and then shoot at it with this outpost here. So look forward to that happening. Villager now going to be sitting inside and revealing. Uh, we'll take a look at the range on that. Actually, he's just dropped the villager out, so you're not going to be able to see it. But scout now towards the south. Uh, I don't know where those archers are. It looks like they've actually just been uh, held back at the moment. Longbow's now moving into position, going to be looking to siege this down. And as we can see, the leapfrogging now begins for Boyt. Uh, there's going to be a defensive outpost that does go up for the sniper, looking to hold on to this. So Boyt definitely in a bit of a difficult spot because that villager is probably going to go down. If that villager goes down, then this is pretty much all over because this does not go up and it, it, it's over. You could probably even just cancel this at, at that point. Once that villager is dead, it's, it's, it's over. You, you, you can kill this. Just, yeah, don't even bother committing at this point. You, yeah, you, you tried, Boyt, and you failed. But uh, <laughs> that's okay. Failure is part of the process. It's part of the process. Boyt now got his Imperial official out. Going to be working or going to be supervising his lumber camp. So we'll talk a little bit about supervision and the way that it works. So supervision is a, an ability that you've got uh, as the Chinese. It comes through from your Imperial official, and you can do it on production buildings or resource generation buildings, which is what we've got here. And what it does is it... Uh, increases the amount of resources that are dropped off by your villagers. So typically, a villager would be dropping off 10 of a certain resource. But you can see here, it's actually dropping off 12. That, that 24 was because two dropped it off at the same time. So you can see that 12 turns into 24. They are dropping off an extra two resources every time because of this guy right here. So there's 12 villagers. Don't think of it as 12 villagers. Think of it actually as like 14.5 villagers. Villagers, uh, speaking of villagers, now down towards the south of the sniper's base. Going to be having a bit of a difficult time. I see at least two villagers that are down there. Three villagers on the ground. No textiles in just yet. And a little bit of a concern. If I'm playing as the sniper and I'm seeing my enemy going for this, I know that they're going to be looking to do some sort of early aggression in the, in the beginning of the game. You need to prioritize that textiles upgrade. You need to get that extra HP on those villagers. Make sure that they're going to be okay. Sniper going to be in a bit of a difficult spot now because Boyt is moving out towards the middle of the map. Actually going with a nice wall. I do like this wall from the Sniper. And I think this is definitely the right decision. I'd love to see a, another villager or two out here just to really speed that up because one of the things that can happen is you can see through the fog of war that your enemy is walling. When they put down the foundation for the walls, even if it hasn't been built, you it will show. So you do need to be very cognizant of that. If I spot my enemy doing that, I will straight away just send out some, some horsemen straight over to the foundation, try and find that villager. Whereas if you send two or three villagers out, they're going to be able to close that up a, a, mu uh, a much sooner uh, or much shorter amount of time. And now we see exactly what I'm talking about, where those horsemen are going to be out over here. Kill that villager, and now you've got a problem because your enemy could potentially push in with their archers and sit on this and now you can't close your wall and now you're getting raided constantly so it's one of those things to be really cognizant of great macro coming out from Boyd at this point everything looking pretty low less than a thousand resources stacked up at the moment we do a quick check of his economy you can see just underneath uh, or just above my cursor it says population uh, so population it's got 30 economic 15 military so we'll take a look over at his opponent the sniper He's on 28 economic, 16 military. So the main thing that we're looking at there is the economic population. It's important to know exactly how many villages each player is on because that gives us an indication of how strongly they are. They're, they're going to be working. Now, one of the things to note with the sniper's base, take a look how far these villagers are having to walk. This is, it becomes really important that you are paying attention to your villagers throughout the game because one of the things that can happen is this. And this is called a long walking distance so we take a look how long it takes for these villagers to walk okay ready uh we'll count these ones okay at 26 let's count how many seconds it takes for this guy right here to come back he left at 26 he's coming back right now nine seconds it took him nine seconds to walk if let's take a look at boyt's base boyt is is looking pretty similar to him at the moment but if you have if you have that sitting right on top 
of your villagers. Oh, beautiful trades right here. Boyt having a little bit of a difficult time. Probably going to have to heal these up if he wants to actually get them into the battle. No, Boyt, be careful, my friend. Those are spears. You don't want to stuff around with those. But if you have got a uh, a lumber camp right next to your trees that you're, uh, you're chopping with your villagers, you don't have any walking distance. And as a result, you're getting a much greater efficiency with your villagers. So even though that there's 17 villagers right now chopping wood, it, it says uh, there's 17. There must be three somewhere else. It's not really like that. You could, it, it's probably like the equivalent of like seven, maybe even six. Spears now going to get picked off by these archers. Archers doing great. You can see the beautiful uniforms of the Chinese archers right there. Each, each unit, despite being unique, or sorry, despite not being unique, um, has got a different, uh, a different aesthetic to it. So the Chinese archer, you can see they've got slightly different bows to the archers of other civilizations. A bit more of a curve in them. Uh, very, very cool looking. Obviously, there's long bows out here for the English player. Going to have much greater range. But keep in mind, despite having a greater range, they are slower. So 1.12 tiles versus 1.25. And now he's in a bit of a difficult spot, the sniper, because ne now we've got plenty of cavalry that comes in looking to counter. Getting a pretty decent job on this, focusing down the longbows on the back. But we see the archers now beginning to focus down the spears on the front line as well, doing a great job. And a couple of these uh, units are moving back. And Boyd having to call it quits on the front line. Men at arms now coming out. This is where the situation gets a little bit weird. When it comes to Age of Empires, there's a, a hidden rule. Rock, paper, scissors. But you want to know what the Men-at-Arms is? Dynamite, baby, because it beats absolutely everything in the Second Age. Well, it beats everything but Micro, okay? If you've got a lot of these guys, technically, they, yeah, they're, they're strong, okay? But they can be counted. They can be counted. So Cavalry will beat them as long as you've got enough of them. Archers can beat them as well as long as you've got enough of them. So it's one of those things. You need to be careful of men at arms in low numbers. But once you start getting up to those higher numbers, it's okay because you can shoot and scoot. And as long as you're, you've got enough damage to sort of one shot them, you're going to be okay. But nonetheless, their dynamite is, is strong. So you, you want to kind of stick away from them. The English obviously have access to the men at arms in the first age. They're the only civilization that's got access to them. They're called the Vanguard Men at Arms. Second Town Center now going to be thrown down for the sniper towards the north of his base. Still not finished this wall just yet, and it can be kind of concerning when he, the fact that he's walling up his entire base right now, and yet still has that open. A couple of a uh, couple of uh, cavalry units now down towards the south going to be looking to open up this wall down here as well, giving him plenty of time to react. And that's really what these walls are buying you. Okay, these walls are buying you time. That's what they are. So now you're going to be able to move your military down here. You're going to be able to catch this raid, force it out, and then re-wall back up. That's what those walls are there for. But now at the same time, we see longbows, or rather we see archers beginning to push in towards the front of the base of, of the sniper. We'll switch back over to the perspective of Boyt, and we'll just take a look at, at how he's doing. More units beginning to come in, trailing in one by one. Going to be able to break through this wall. Not going to be seeing any potential um, hold that comes in, at least not, not yet really. We'll take a look from Boyt's perspective, see what he's up to. Going with a bit more of a, a curious wall. I do like these walls from Boyt. Uh, so we, the, these, are, these are two different philosophies when it comes to walling. Open and closed. Uh, Boyt going with open, Sniper going with closed. Um, so Sniper having a, a bit of a decent time here. Plenty of longbows here. Can move back towards the town center. He's going to be absolutely fine. It, Boyt is going to no, go nowhere near this town center. As the English, the English do have a civilization bonus where their town center actually fires double the amount of arrows as a normal civilization. Don't go near it. Do not go near it. Dropping down the healing aura as well, the little fire camp. You can see it down there on the ground. Going to be healing up all of these longbows, doing a great job, just trickling one by one. But now, now the horsemen are in and it's a difficult time for the sniper because Boyd is going to be able to chase these around. And you can just see the speed difference between these two units. So the Spearman having 1.25 movement speed versus 1.88 for Boyt as well. So definitely a difficult spot for him. Going to be able to get plenty of scouting in here as well. We do see that the wall is open towards the north here, but uh, going to get closed up very shortly. No villagers going down. Potential catch coming in right here. Viper, oh, Viper. <laughs> Boyt uh, going to be losing uh, at least one horseman as Sniper, not Viper, Sniper. Uh, comes in and uh, manages to do well. Now, he can actually turn around with all of his villagers and kill these. There's, there's, there's so many villagers right there, uh, and the English long, and the English uh, villagers are very, very powerful when it comes to their range attack. Um, so one of the things to do. But he manages to just walk out of there. So let's talk a little bit more about uh, walling styles. So this is called a closed wall. Uh, this is where you essentially cut yourself off from the outside world. With Boyt's walls, this is an open wall. And the idea here is that he just wants to prevent his enemy from passing through. He doesn't actually want them to to stop getting them from behind. He just wants to be able to have time to react and to avoid 
raids that are coming through. It, it, he is not committed to having his enemy not raid him, if that makes sense. But speaking of not raiding, Boyd actually going for a triple town center play in the second age. Now, one of the things that I have theorized is that as the Chinese, you shouldn't actually go for a triple uh, town center. Uh, the, the best play is actually to go for double town center. And then if you want to add that extra expansion, what you do is you actually go for a dynasty. So you look to secure the dynasty that enables uh, the production of the Trukunru, uh, enables the production of villages. Uh, and so I am, I am, of course, talking about the Song dynasty. Uh, let's take a look here. So there's, there you can see the village. It, it uh, requires the Song dynasty. Uh, so a, a really efficient house. Um, and that would enable you to train your villagers uh, much faster. So it actually works out per capita to be a, a, a bit more than... Uh, well, it's 13. So it, it works out to be about 3.2 town centers versus 3 town centers. But nonetheless, uh, you know, it, it, when, it, when it comes to this kind of thing, like obviously you're securing maps. So there's different schools of thoughts to it. You know, th this one here, it's, he's going to be able to focus and protect this gold mine if any raids come through. This one here, he's got a nice expansion point that he's going to be able to do something similar on up towards the north. So he's expanding out on the map, if that makes sense. Player scores, we can see the boy is quite ahead at this point. Uh, but at the same time, doesn't really have a lot of information about what his opponent is doing. Going up to the third age now has dropped down that all-important landmark. Going up with the astronomical clock tower. And definitely the wise choice in this matchup. Now, for anybody unfamiliar with the Chinese landmarks, the astronomical clock tower is one of those landmarks that is... It's very strong. Incredibly strong. In fact, it's its so strong, it probably needs to be nerfed a little bit. I, I'll say that much. And th that's coming from a China player. And that's coming from a China player who doesn't win a lot with China. So... This landmark makes your siege units have 50% more HP. 50% more. So that means if your Manganel had 300 health, well, now it's got 450 health. And you might be thinking, okay, but Jonga, that's fine. It's just one siege. Um, it, it might, it, it's just one siege uh, production facility. It's not a big deal. It's not like there's going to be a whole lot of siege coming out of that. It's, it's nothing too crazy, right? Right? Wrong. So... You can see right here that uh, Boyt is currently supervising one of his lumber camps. He can also supervise the astronomical clock tower. And right now we've got a nest of bees that's just come out. That took, uh, that took 45 seconds to come out. When you're supervising the clock tower, it takes 15 seconds. 15 seconds to come out. This acts as three siege workshops that produce, uh, that produce artillery with 50% higher HP. Very, very strong landmark. So I'm looking forward to seeing exactly how Viper manages to do uh, as we move towards the mid game. Did I say, did I say Viper? I think I said Viper. It's because we got Sniper in the game. It's because we got Sniper in the game. I say Viper. Uh, apologies. Sniper now reaching the third age. We'll take a look at the landmark that he's gone up with. Going in up with the White Tower. Now, this is one of those landmarks that I, I feel is an overrated landmark. Now, it is, it is strong, okay? Part of the reason why is because it acts as a... Uh, it's it's a triple threat, baby. It's a triple threat. It is a it, it's an archery range. It is a uh, a stable. It is a uh, barracks, and uh, actually, it's a quadruple threat. It is it is the quad threat, uh, and it can also train artillery in it as well. So it can literally train all of your English units. Really, really cool building. Uh, but obviously, you can only do one at a time. And also, it's about opportunity cost. So when it comes to your landmark, so you've also got access to the king's palace. And even though you might be thinking in from the perspective of the sniper, like, oh, I'm on 72 villages already. You know, I don't need to have a third town center. Well, a third town center is always a welcome addition. Um, but when it comes to a, a castle like this, well, I don't really know how much it's, it's going to actually be able to prevent a lot of damage uh, that's going to happen. Just because if your enemy spots out a, a keep or a castle like this in this position... It's easy for them to play around it. And especially this landmark here, it, it kind of, it, it's, it's a double-edged sword, right? Because when you're placing your keeps, your castles, you want to be defending things like this, a gold vein, right? But you don't want your landmarks to be out on the map because if you lose a landmark, that's pretty important, right? So it, it kind of, it, it, it hurts to have it so early in the game because you want it to be on some somewhere important like this, but at the same time, you don't want 10 villagers going out there unprotected, building a landmark that takes incredibly long compared to a, a normal ca castle or keep. And so it's one of those things where it's like, it, it's d definitely a trade-off that I uh, have thought a lot about 
as you can probably tell, and I, I find it difficult to justify this, but I'm curious to see how the sniper manages to go with it. Uh, obviously, the English are a very defensive civilization, so undoubtedly he'll look to capitalize on that. I do expect we'll see some Springholds coming out from him. Uh, so anybody wondering, what is the best counter to the Nest of Bees? It is going to be the Springhold. Uh, is, is what your best bet is. Let's take a look at, at the nest of bees. Just get a nice little close up there. If you've got, if you're a subscriber at the moment, you can pop in that. Oh, oh, oh my God. Isn't that the most beautiful sound? Make sure you put that beautiful, uh, that the beautiful emote that we've got right now. Uh, any subscribers in the chat, it's one of the new ones that's just been added. It is the nest of bees and he's going on an absolute rampage. Oh my Lord, I love it. Nest of bees now moving forward. Take a look at these nest of bees. Now, you might be wondering, what do these units act as? They are unique to the Chinese. What do they do? They are anti-infantry. That's what they do. They are like mangonels on steroids. They're absolutely crazy. So you've got to be very careful against them. If you've got a nice big mass of infantry, just like this, it's not going to be lasting for very long because these nest of bees do very, very well against them. Uh, obviously don't have a lot of siege. You can see just how, how long it's taking for these units to get siege down, but 360 HP on these bad boys. Uh, and now it looks like towards the north. Oh my lord, that's a lot of <laughs> that's a lot of gold miners right there. So one of the things to note is when you've got this many gold miners, what you need to do, drop down a second, drop down a third mining camp around here. Look at the walking distance that's going on right here. This villager right here, it's going to be taking a lot of time to walk. Landmark now getting destroyed out for the sniper. We'll ride along from his perspective. We'll take a look exactly what he sees and see how he's going to be able to hold this right now. He is definitely stuck between the wall. The wall? The, the hard place? A hard place and a rock. We'll go We'll go with that. He is... He, look, he's holding on for dear life right now. When it comes to score, Boyt is up significantly. Many people would probably call good game when your opponent is up that much of a score difference. But that is part of the reason why Age of Empires 4 has removed the score. You don't know where you're at. You don't know. Is, is my enemy on one TC? Is he on three TCs? Is, has he got a thousand villagers? Has he got three? You've got no clue because there's no score. So you don't know where you're at. You just play the game and you feel the game and you you become one with the game. And that's what they want. That's what they want. They just want you to become one with the game. Why do, what, come on, John. Why don't you become one with the game? You guys get where, where I'm coming from. And that, that's what it's about. Managing to hold on pretty well here. Now, one of the things I would expect out of Boyd uh, from here is that we actually get a traction trebuchet. Uh, so the, the traction trebuchet is going to be able to outrange, or just rather, I guess the counterweight trebuchet, uh, is going to be able to uh, out outrange this uh, white tower quite effectively. But then you sort of get into this difficult spot where now you've got villagers that start to heal up the white tower because uh, you're trying to break through it. And so how do you get those villagers off it? Well, you can push in with your nest of bees and try and get them off it. Or you can make more trebuchets. But then when you start investing a lot of resources into trebuchets, they're not really good at killing units. And so now your enemy's got, you know, a, a potential opportunity cost um, there as well that, that they've done. But oh my lord, I didn't expect to see that. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got the battering rams coming in. One, two, three, coming in from line of sight right now. Boyd absolutely taking it to the sniper at this point. Battering rams have got significant armor a, fifth, a total of 15 armor right there. You can see just how effective they are at tanking. Going to be able to hold all of the fire down. You cannot reallocate fire from the town center or from the White Castle. Well, did I say the White Castle? The White Tower. Sorry, not the White Castle. Uh, we're not talking about those $1 burgers here, baby. It is completely different. Longo's on the back line. Now going to be moving in. A couple spring odds trying their best to take down the clockwork, the clock tower nest of bees. Plenty of spears on the front line. Going to be forcing their way back. Lots of crossbowmen in here as well. And the nest of bees are in a bit of a difficult spot. They need to hold. They cannot move back any further than this right now. A wall going to go down here for the sniper. The sniper looks like he's actually holding on incredibly well, managing to focus down these units. And that's what he needs to do. Avoid firing at these battering rams. These are going to be holding the fire from the town center, holding the, the, the fire from the white castle. Still the nest of bees managing to get shots on one of the back line. Got to be so careful right here. One of the nest of bees going down. A single nest of bees remaining and it goes down. Almost there it goes. Gets blown up in a dis display of fireworks. We talked about fireworks earlier in our YouTube video. And this is exactly what I was talking about. You see just how strong that longbow defense is right there. And this is why it's so hard to push into those English. The English defense is absolutely insanity. This town center burns, but it lives. And that's what's important. Is the sniper hopefully going to get some villagers over on to repair it? Now we start to see scores evening up. You can see the sniper is now within 600 points of Boyd. And he managed to hold. The, the Britons have held. The English have held. He gets vill villagers and now coming over to heal this bad boy up. Do not worry, friends. They are absolutely fine. Really, really nice play by Boyd. 
really nice play by Boyd. Uh, but unfortunately, it looked like he overcommitted just a little bit. Uh, really needed to focus with his nest of bees on those longbows on the back line that were doing so much damage. But now Sniper is feeling very good. Boyd reaching the Imperial Age. We'll take a look over at his perspective and spot exactly what he's got coming out. Looks like the Great Wall of Boyd is coming out, aka the Great Wall of China. It's just a, it's just a wooden wall though, Palisade Wall. You don't need to be worried about that. That's not a stone wall, at least not yet. But uh, Boyd now going up to the fourth age. We'll take a look what landmark he's gone up with. It looks like the Spirit Way is what he's gone up with at this point. So for anybody wondering, what does the Spirit Way do? It's a unique Chinese landmark. Let's talk a little bit about it. So the Spirit Way, it enables you to build any of your dynasty units. Now, remember, I spoke earlier about dynasties and the fact that you can unlock units like the True Corner, you can unlock the Fire Lancer, but you lose access to those units after you leave the dynasty. But before we talk about that, we're going to talk a little bit about this gameplay right here. Longbows on the back line with, or crossbows on the back line with archers doing their best to fire off. And now you can see how strong these men at arms are. Eight armor on these men at arms. Absolute insanity right now. Holy moly. Eight armor, eight ranged armor. That is insane. Whoa. So for anybody, anybody wondering about that, that is the upgrade. I can't remember exactly what it's called, but that's the reason why the men at arms for the English are so good. Uh, it, it gives plus two available in the castle age. I can't remember the exact name. Ram's going to be going down on the front, getting sieged down here uh, by all of these units here. We just see how many men at arms there are. So strong. Looks like a clock tower bombard is coming out. That is the wrong unit, my friend. You, you need nest of bees and you need them yesterday. Um, but essentially this uh landmark we see a whole bunch of uh, wood being sold right there this landmark where are we this one right here the spirit way is going to be giving you access to those previous units it's also going to be enabling um a, a cost reduction so you get a cost reduction of 30 percent for any of those dynasty units so once you get into the late game, those Grenadiers, it's going to be really good for those. Bombard now. Now keep in mind the Bombard is not the correct choice here. Bombard is going to be focusing down units and it's it's high damage, very low AoE. It does very, very light AoE. It is nowhere near what you would expect like a, out of a Falconet or something like that. Boyd now getting pushed back significantly despite being up at an age. It looks like he's going to be down an army at this point, heading behind his, his stone walls having a difficult time against his enemy, and I suspect he's going to need to drop down a lot of more production facilities. Right now, you see he's dropping down an archery range, an archery range, an archery range, another archery range right here. Do we have any more? There needs to be there needs to be more archery ranges going down over on this spirit way right now. So you might be wondering, what the heck does he do in this situation? What is the play? And in my opinion, there are there, there's, there's essentially one play that you can make. That's knights. You have to mass up knights and try and get them out. Now, you can see he's actually... Or lancers, rather. He's got elite lancer, but he needs to get a decent mass of them. He's only got three here, and he needs to be careful because even though they only take two damage, they're not going to be able to cut through this until... Because all of these spears are going to be potentially dealing damage. So he needs to build up a nice little mass, you know, get 10, 12 knights, and then use his archers to pick off the remaining spears that are in here. And then hopefully he should be able to clean this up. But there's not a lot of spears. He should recognize that. We should see a transition out of him. I wish that right now, you know what would be really cool? If up here I could just click this menu and go to production tab, and then I could see everything that was in production for him. So I could see... Yeah, I'd, I'd be able to sit here watching the battle and be like, and now we can see he is producing 16 knights coming out of his stables. What a crazy cat. You know, but, but we can't. We can't We can't see that. We actually have to go find his military production buildings like here, and then we just click on them. He's actually making hand cannoneers. Interesting choice. Um, Do I agree with this? Does he have plus three armor? He, he, okay, he's got plus three range armor. Yeah, I agree with this. As long as he's got plus three range armor, it, that's fine. Uh, so th th this is actually, this is fine. Uh, this is a great, this is a great composition coming out here from Boyd. Uh, really safe gold mine here. It's actually going to be running out though, so needs to start trading and needed to start trading probably yesterday. He's got plenty of space back here for a market. At least I think he should be able to fit it in. Um, there, there should be enough room here for a market. I think he may have intentionally left that. Boyd now going to be moving out towards this gold mine, and once again we talk about these gold mines, and this is really what Age of Empires for at a high level is all about. It is about controlling the gold mines, and oh my lord, we see a landmark coming down the Berkshire Palace going to be coming down here, and this is going to be cause for concern for Boyd because this is an incredibly long range landmark. It's going to be able to outrange even the clock tower um, bombard. 
um, and it, it, you see the army's now beginning to push up. Plenty of hand cannons here. Bombards need to be retreating right now. They're not doing that. Okay, now they're getting the retreat out. Do they have their pyrotechnics upgrade just yet? They do not have their upgrade just yet, but you can see on the front line, hand cannon is doing their best. The problem is that, that they are dealing uh, with, with units that are just getting in on top of them. The longbows at the same time are firing off dealing with those hand cannons very easily these bombards need to move away sniper now reaching the imperial age we talked about this this is the problem right here because once he researches this cannon emplacement he is going to be able to deal with these cannons and the only way he's going to be able to deal uh, with the berkshire palace is through trebuchets and trebuchets are slow low damage dealing compared to the bombards and you ideally want to avoid that take a look at just how far this berkshire palace is firing right now you just see the damage that it's got going to be able to deal with these very effectively shooting at the closest unit so you can see uh, just how much damage is putting out destroying those units uh, I'd love to see him garrison just a few more units in here as far as I'm aware oh my lord is he actually he's grinding through that oh he, he might actually get this right here he's got he's totally gonna get it oh my lord he wasn't he couldn't focus down the uh, couldn't focus down the clock tower bombards he actually gets it the Berkshire Palace does go down so never mind me Berkshire Palace, who needs to worry about that when you've got bombards, it seems. And not just any bombards, clock tower bombards. Going to be looking to focus down the next castle, the next keep right now. Boy, in a decent position. As we enter 30 minutes through this game, you see it at the top corner, or the top of the screen. Everybody is now in the Imperial Age. We're entering into the late game. Boyd sitting with 127 villagers. Compare that over to his opponent right now who sits on 116. Both of these players have significant economies behind this. Both players walled up. Both players feeling very safe, very secure. And they're fighting over the last remaining resources out here on the map. These are the last remaining resources that they're aware of, I should say. Now... The sniper has uncovered this. Has Boyt uncovered this? The Boyt has not uncovered this yet. So it is potential for him to be able to move down here. Uh, now, one of the things that these players need to do is they need to look to start trading. We see the trade post up here at the back. Markets now finally going down for Boyt. And we talked about this. It was enough room for him to be able to fit down these markets. And he's going to be able to start trading. He's walled this off very effectively. He's going to be able to do it safe. But the difficult, spot, or the difficult part uh, for his opponent is is that his opponent's market is down here and uh well he, there's no real walls to protect it and i think i suspect if he did start trading that these castles would probably be, be able to hit them from there so you've got to be very careful but look at the difference in military numbers between this 14 military units out or 14 military population out for Boyd at this point compared to the sniper who sits on 63. Boyd still 700 points ahead at this stage but despite that the game looks still very even berkshire palace now getting getting respawned getting rebuilt i guess you'd say you can see it trying to get up the, the villagers just having a bit of a tough time they've got insufficient wood and it looks like it's going to go down way too much damage coming out right there nowhere near enough but slowly that keep is getting hammered down and we can see uh from the sniper's perspective his wood is running low we'll take a look at Boyd. Boyd running nowhere near low but now a bit of a push coming up right now into two keeps this is not an advisable play do not do this uh, sniper this is not the right choice my friend now we see Boyd beginning to kite back. This is exactly what he needs to do. Get underneath. Get right behind these keeps. Run your enemy underneath them. Try your best to make sure that they are in there. They take as much damage as possible. Plenty of villagers going to continue healing up this keep. They're not too fast. Now we see those melee units beginning to focus down the siege. Not having a really easy time because these are clock tower bombards. They are much larger in charger bombards. And now the village is coming in in the face of the sniper and dropping a forward castle look how fast it goes up oh my lord is that a house or is that a castle look how quickly that goes up that's 25 villages right there <laughs> there it goes you, uh, you blink and you miss it that was a quick castle ladies and gentlemen wow okay <laughs> oh my lord oh jeez <laughs> he's, he's gonna have road rash after that that was absolute insanity now behind this more and more archery rangers coming in we do see that there are archers that are beginning to build for him and this gold mine has now been completely exhausted take a look how much gold he's going to be getting out of this trader 103 gold if he can start getting these traders on board really start getting them going because that's what he needs to invest in with this i need to see him just drop down like six markets all along the back here and just all right click on this point right here and just go absolutely ham within five minutes he's going to be swimming in gold he'll win the game in no time but it's already feeling like he's winning the game at this point just because he's managed to secure this gold vein this is really important we'll take a look over at the opponent's perspective see what he's got going on and oh my lord we whisper it we don't want we don't want boyd to hear we don't want boyd to hear 
there's a little bit of a, uh, I mean, <laughs> there's a little bit of an underground logging operation going on here. What is, what is this, sniper? What are you, why are you going to castle up here to protect your mine? Uh, you know what? You probably run out of wood. Oh, yeah, you're, you're running out of wood. Okay. All right. I see why you're doing an underground logging operation. But uh, I guess gold isn't the, uh, isn't the issue that you're running into, is it? Uh, but now the elite knights on the back line, or elite lancers, rather, are going to be doing a great job here of soaking up all this damage. Uh, we spot now that uh, the elite longbowmen, I don't think they've got the uh, university upgrade out just yet. We're going to take a look and see if we can spot any university out on the field. It doesn't really look like it. Uh, let's take a look towards the north. Yeah, no university just yet. So the university upgrade is going to increase DPS by, I think, about 20%. Uh, keep in mind that the Longbowmen have also got access to that all-important Imperial Age ability. Uh, let's see if we can spot it. Uh, there it is, the archery range. So this one right here, it's called Arrow Volley. So Arrow Volley is going to increase the attack speed that your Longbows have by 70%. So really important to get this one. Going to be pushing forward, looking at losing. There goes the first Bombard down, second Bombard. Probably going to get taken down by 17 men at arms right now. Very expensive. You do not want to lose these. This is so, so painful for Boyd to replace this. It's going to take a lot of gold. But you can see now it lo almost looks like the Give You Anxiety uh, catapult right here or Mangonel because those villagers just heal up that Clock Tower Bombard so quickly. Villagers getting in on the action. It looks like a couple daggers getting pulled out by those villagers as well. Really getting into it. You see they're trying to... They, it looks like they're just threatening. They're like, hey, don't you come here. I'm going to chuck you up, girl. But then, then they just get destroyed. More Bombard's going to be coming out now for the sniper and having a bit of a difficult time. <laughs> a battering ram going to be moving forward to soak up any potential damage. Elite Spearman now going to be up here as well. Healing Circle going down for the Elite Longbow. We see that they've dropped down that setup camp ability. And now the Spearmen need to be turning around, need to be focusing down this Lancer. But there's a, a single Spearman that does it. It's doing 40, 40? No, 36 damage uh, to that cavalry, managing to take it out. And we see a single Bombard remains. It doesn't have a lot of health on it. Compare that to the Clock Tower Bombard, which has got uh, 864 on it, but managing to take down that keep. And look how much of this gold has already been taken by Boyt. He's done an incredible job, but take a look at the scores. We are down to 300, almost 200 score difference between these two players. So remember earlier when that push was coming in and Boyt was doing his best to try and end the game, it really looked like there was, you know, a significant difference between these players. But despite that, the sniper has still managed to keep himself in this game. And now he's going to be looking at potentially pushing on the north side having a bit of a difficult time because one keep is going to be firing off at his keep. And why is it doing so much damage? What What is it about this keep that does insane damage? Oh, because it's got the hand cam... Oh, the Chinese keeps are really good. Okay, okay. So, your keeps, they have armor on them, right? 50. Okay, but the hand cannon bypasses that, I guess, by doing three? I don't know. Why, is, why was it doing so much damage? I don't even know. Is there like a hidden... Bo oh. <laughs> ah, yep. That old, that old trick. The hide the bombard just out of range trick. Oldest trick in the book. <laughs> that old trick. <laughs> ah, uh, I, hey, I've, uh, it's not my first rodeo. I'll be honest with you guys, but yeah, I kind of, I kind of got rolled on that. One. <laughs> oh man. Oh, sometimes you get him. Sometimes you get caught. One of the things to note, though, okay, in, in this matchup, so I, I've sort of theorized what is the best... <laughs> oh, hide the bombard. <laughs> it wasn't even hiding. It's like, it's right here. It wasn't even behind a tree line or behind a wall. It's literally like the most obvious bombard you can see, man. We're, the, we're 38 minutes through this game, and it doesn't look like it's going to be ending anytime soon. This is absolutely ludicrous at this point. Sniper having a bit of a difficult time. I'll say that much, but you, one of the things that I will talk about is map control, and you can see why it's so important. I feel like at this point, the most important thing that Boyt needs to do is just sit back and build up his army. That's, that is really the key for him. Get that pyrotechnics upgrade. He doesn't even have that upgrade just yet. Um, so I, I would love to see that coming out of him. I have spoken to Boyt about his China play, and he mentioned that he hasn't actually played a lot of late game China. So that could perhaps be a contributing factor uh, to it. But now we see there are uh, attacks happening multiple parts of the map. Uh, and a bit of a difficult spot right now for Sniper because he's running out of wood. And that's what he needs to make his all-important longbows. Very nice use of the uh, formations here as well. So we've got line formation uh, being used here by these longbowmen. Uh, making sure that they have the best concave possible. Uh, more bombards coming out now at this point. Now, I'm curious. I don't actually know. I don't think the English have got access to the culverin, do they? 
No, they do not. Interesting. And now, oh, we've, we've got, this is the uh, university tech that I was talking about a little bit earlier. You see those flaming arrows right there. They are not the flaming arrows from Age of Empires 3 that the flaming arrows shoot. These are the flaming arrows of the elite archers that come out. This is the university tech. Uh, it is an upgrade that they've got access to that gives them, I think it's an extra 20% damage or something ridiculous, something ludicrous like that. I'm going to continue looking for that university. It's really important that we try and find it. Uh, that's a blacksmith right there. Still no university at this point. Um, definitely a bit of an oversight by the sniper. I will say that much, but uh, we'll keep looking. So going for another underground mining operation or un un underground, uh, uh, an, an underground uh, logging operation. But one of the things for, for Boyd is that he's really having a difficult time building up this mass. You can see right now just how many resources he's having difficulty with. Uh, I, I love to be able to have a click on these markets and just see um, what the rates are. They're actually pretty darn good rates. So if, he, uh, if I was him, I would just trade out like 2,000 food right now and, and really just drop down a whole bunch of production. But ideally, I would love to see him. You know what I really want to see him do? Grenadiers. Oh my lord. If he got grenadiers out, this game would be over faster than you can say grenadier. Uh, <laughs> I guess. Look at the longbows, how much damage they do before units even get into range. And now you can see more units beginning to group on the back line. Hand cannons, I feel like they're probably not the answer here. They would more be the answer in closer range combat, but they've got a difficult time because they have to run up right next to them. Uh, and it's, it's a difficult spot. Do we do we see that university going down just yet? More longbows going to be firing off. A keep going to be going down here as well. But it looks like there's no villagers that are going to be able to uh, be building it. Do we have that university yet? I continue to look for it. We still don't have that university. Oh, there it is. There's the university. We have the university down. Let's take a look at that important upgrade that we're talking about. It's the incendiary arrow. Increases the damage of range units and buildings by 20%. Does not apply to gunpowder units. That is a lot of percent. I'm not a mathematician, but I tell you what, I know numbers when I see them, and 20 is a lot. In addition to that, we've also got the the increase the damage of rams and trebuchets by 30%. What are you getting geometry for? What are you getting geometry for, sniper? Hey, man. And elite army tactics increases the health of all melee infantry by 10% and their damage by 10%. Sniper! You, you're literally... You're playing the civilization called Longbowman. Your middle name is Longbowman. Your uncle died in the war and he was a Longbowman. Come on. We've been through this. Get the incendiary arrow, Sniper. You can do it! 34 idols, 37 idols, 24 idols. A fair bit of idols right here, but still a lot of villagers, so that's not too bad. And finally, there's a bit of a lull in the action. I think this is a 42 minute game so far, and I feel like there's been action for about 43 minutes at this point. Uh, see more upgrades now coming through. Players are well and truly hitting the late game. Boyd now moving out to go and grab some some lunch over at this wolf. Now, oh, uh, you guys want to you guys want to play a game with me? How many kills does the wolf get? Check this out. Okay, this is this is wild. In the late game, okay. In the late game, you're you're not really paying attention to the wolf, right? Because you've got like a you've got a million things going on right now. Like you're over here, you're over here, okay. But there's like there's one cheeky guy, one cheeky dog, over here, and he's just having a field day. He's like he is just biting everybody. Look at this, look at this insane damage. You know what? We're not gonna watch that. It's gonna take a long time. We're not gonna bother. We're <laughs> we're going back over to the action. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go. To <laughs> we're back over in the action. Boy, pushing in with like six units at this point. Boy, what are you doing, son? Get it together. I would really love to see some knobs out of... Uh, boy, I just called them knobs. Nest of bees uh, is what they're called. They're not called knobs. Uh, you know, children, if you're watching this at home and you're asking, Mum, can I get Age of Empires because I want to play the Chinese and get lots of knobs? Don't do that. Don't do that. They are... Uh, <laughs> that's not what they're called. They're called nest of bees. They are, they're called nest of bees. So that's what I'd like to see. Now, <laughs> now we've got... Now we got the, the classic forward stable going in here from Boyd <laughs> with a single villager. Like, Boyd is just like misclicked on a massive level, dude. I'm losing my shit at this game. Like Boyd is going for the classic, the classic in the base enemy, in the enemy base stable. Yeah. <laughs> oh my lord, this is getting a little bit ridiculous. Finally, we've got those knobs coming in. You can see they're knobs. N O B knob nest of bees. Uh, so this is this is great from Boyd, bringing those bad boys out. He's actually got his siege workshop down here. I'd love to, for him to have his, uh, his his clockwork tower. He needs to really be getting this pyrotechnics upgrade. So increases the range of gunpowder units by 20%. An absolutely massive upgrade. Really important that he gets this one. But I want to take a look at his economy and see exactly how he's managing at the moment. You can see there's only a couple of traders that are out and about at the moment. Let's see exactly how many we've got. 
He is making more. Uh, eight active traders. Or 21, actually. I don't know what that is. Oh my god, he's got 237 gold in it? How many Imperial officials? He's got four Imperial officials out. Uh, but, uh... Keep gonna be doing its best. Take a look how many, um... <clears throat> excuse me. Just give me a second, I just need a drink, boys. And girls. And MBs. Alright, there we go. Uh, so... It's, um... It, it's insane watching how much damage that they put that out. But for anybody wondering... Uh, in addition to the Pyrotechnics upgrade, which is unique uh, to the Chinese, they've also got a couple of other ones. So they've got Reload Drills, which reduces the reload time of Bombards by 33%. So very helpful in this kind of situation. And they've also got uh, Reusable Barrels, which reduces the cost of Nesta Bees by 25%. So they're quite expensive, uh, sitting at 300-300, so it brings it down to 225-225. Very, very nice play. Uh, Boyd actually in a pretty decent spot here, but we take a look, the scores have now sp switched. Boyd is actually down 600 score at this point. He's trying his best to hold on. And uh, he's actually lost his forward keep. 2,237 gold remains in this vein. Uh, down to the south. Boyd has actually uncovered this gold vein. Going to begin walling off down towards the south. I, I believe he's probably going to be making a move down here. Doing a little bit of long distance mining as well. As 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 is, you know, what you do when you're uh, 45 minutes through a game. That is, that's almost compulsory, I feel like. Uh, so I, I guess for me, what is the question? What would I like to see out of Boyd here? First and foremost, I want to see more traders. I want to see more markets. Uh, I would have loved to have seen just like five markets drop down here and just like gone absolutely crazy. Markets are very cheap in Age of Empires too. They cost a hundred wood. So do not be afraid to put a lot of them down. And then at the same time, I really think it's important to get that pyrotechnics upgrade. And then really a combination of nest of bees and bombards. By doing that, it means that you're going to be able to uh, to really have a lot of power. But now we see our first Manganel of the game coming out from the Sniper. We're going to be looking at getting a lot of damage spread onto these units. Take a look how much damage this does. You can see the splash that will come in ever so slightly. There it comes. Fair amount of damage right there. I think three Manganel shots will do the one shot. So you've got to be very careful with your elite archers because they may go down. Take a look at all the foundations out here already. Viper, Viper, uh, Sniper in a pretty decent spot. Going to be neutralizing the Sacred Site towards the middle of the map, standing in it. Come on, get in there. You're giving your opponent uh, plenty of gold, just trickling in if you let them remain doing that. Uh, we also see a, a Relic is back here. So one of the things to note is if you do spawn with a Relic in your base, make sure you just pick it up. That's 100 gold uh, every minute that you're missing out on if you do not do that. Um, so really important. And now we see the push getting to the point where it's starting to become a shove. So Bombard's now beginning to move out as well. Just doing a great job of cleaning this up. And you might be wondering, what's the best way to deal with this? I, I'm really thinking uh, it, it's got to be Knights. Knights and Grenadiers. But Grenadiers, the, pro the problem with going Grenadiers is that it's very, very expensive. So you've already got one Spirit Way, okay? Or one, one Imperial Landmark. How do you get Grenadiers? Well, my friend, you have to make the second Imperial Landmark. Yes, you heard me correct. So you can actually get, you can actually create the second Imperial Landmark as the Chinese, you can create all of your Age 2, Age 3, and Age 4 landmarks, both of them, uh, at any point during the game. And then you will, if you do both of the Age 4 ones, you will unlock the Grenadier. And the Grenadier is expensive, but once you get some of those bad boys out, you put a couple knights in front of them, and then you get them up over here, they will do so much work on these units, it will not even be funny. That's what I'd like to see. Who knows if we'll actually see that, because for you to actually get that landmark, you need to build it on top of a stone wall. And we don't see any stone walls out at this point in time uh, for Boyd. So unlikely that we're going to see that. But I think that, that knights are definitely the right choice or lances are definitely the right choice. These are fully upgraded lances at this point. It looks like he's actually decided he's going to go in for a bit of a push. He's got enough archers here that he's going to be able to, to one-shot spearmen. And that's what he needs to do. He needs to make sure that he stays away from those spears or fires them down. We can see the first one going to go down. He's, he's actually taking out a longbowman here. He needs to be making sure that he's focusing down the spears. Now he's getting in on top of those spears. He needs to be careful. There's just too many spears here. He needs to be running away from them. But at the same time, these longbows are just going to focus down on these archers. So it's really a difficult spot for him. The Lancers look like they're going to be able to overrun these Longbows and doing a pretty decent switch here. We do actually see at the back here that there are plenty of Spears that do remain, but these Lancers getting in on top and all that gold starting to get mined out now by the Sniper. Sniper definitely deciding it is his time. Do or die is right now. And look how many military production buildings the Sniper has got sitting back here. Oh my lord, you asked for a game and you got it, my friends. 
Holy Julie. Jeez Louise, 49 minutes into this game, and I've got absolutely no clue which way it's going to go. Sniper is up 1k score at the moment, or about 1k score. More than 1k score. Down 700 score now, it seems. It, it's moving around more than I am on my seat right now, and I tell you what, I'm, I'm, I'm moving a lot. Arch is now going to be moving out as well. Maybe we could see palace guards. Maybe that would work. I don't even know at this point. Maybe if you just spammed palace guard. So for anybody wondering, palace guard is the unique uh, men at arms that the Chinese get. So the Chinese get access to... Uh, I don't even think... Has he even made... Has he even made a barracks yet? I don't even think he's made a barracks. Hold on. F4 is it? Or F5? F4. There we go. He hasn't even made a barracks yet. This madman hasn't even made a barracks at this point. Um, so maybe he could do a switch into that, but it's a pretty big investment. I mean, you've got a lot of... Um, you, you've got a lot of resources that you need to invest, but those those units especially are very uh, cost-effective for what they do because they cost a lot of food, not a lot of gold, and they do have quite high, um, quite high armor, and at the same time, they have very high movement speed. So it's, it's something to consider. Now doing a great job of just forcing out a couple of those spears. Needs to get back, and we can just see this longbow mass that really doesn't get broken down or broken through at any point. A couple walls still sitting back here, occasionally faking me out. Now a couple units taking down this keep that was on the north side of the map. So Boyd looking at cleaning this up. He does know that there is a town center up here as well. I'm not sure how long this town center has been up here for, but nonetheless, it's uh, probably not very long for this world if Boyd does manage to get his eyes on it. Plenty of spears down here as well. I'm going to flip us over to the sniper. I want to just do a quick tally up of how many units he's got coming out of these. 16 barracks, 8 archery rangers. So you can just see how good of a position he's in right now. As any of his units die, he immediately replaces them. Instantly. They die, instantly replace. A really, really great late game macro from him. I'd love to see a couple more units or a couple more villagers moving over to food just so that he's got that income. And you can see the, the army of units coming out from the sniper right here. Compare that over to Boyd. Boyd sitting down on 165 at the moment. So really fighting an uphill battle. Always going to be taking inefficient trades against his opponent when he has got a much less uh, population heavy army than his opponent. Now going to be taking out that town center, as we mentioned. Trebuchet just, just taking out a, a lumber camp. I think it actually hit. I think it actually missed that lumber camp. I'm pretty sure like the rock hit right here and I don't think it hit. So I think it's going to burn to the ground instead. Does it burn to the ground instead? The, I mean, the rock still go. <laughs> the, the bombard took out the villager and it AOE the lumber camp down. Trebuchet, you're so bad, Trebuchet. <laughs> oh, Trebuchet. Why are you so bad, Trebuchet? <laughs> oh, my lord. This is an absolutely insane game. But now Boyd is, is in a bit of a difficult spot. Now, ooh, going to be switching into horsemen. I like this. I like this. I think this is a wise choice. I mean, when you consider what his economy is looking like. Um, I, th I think horsemen are definitely a, a wise choice. Uh, I'd love to see him just drop down another, like, 10 stables, though. I think that would be best. Now going to be moving in, looking at sieging down this bombard, going straight after it. I don't think that's the right choice. I think he needs to pull back here. Nearly, uh, nearly. Neil really needs to bait out these spears. You can see just how easy of a time they're, they're having. And going after villagers at this point in the game, it is not worth it, my friend. You are going to be having a very ineffective trade. Villagers are so easy to replace at this point in the game. It is not at all a problem. Uh, you know, when you've got 120 villagers and you lose 10, that's easy. You know, it, it's you're losing less than a tenth of your economy. You're going to be able to replace them in less than three minutes because you've got, well, in less than two minutes, rather, because you've got so many town centers. And now beginning to push in, you can see these archers doing a, doing a lot of damage. A market going down here on the front line. This is the classic forward market right now from Sniper. And a whole, a whole bunch of... Palings just went down. <laughs> He's paling to the market. He's paling to the market. The the cavalry, cavalry getting caught in the palings at the market, and it's it's never a fun day when you, you go down to the market and there's just a random paling hitting you, especially when it's a forward market. It really hurts. Going to be getting plenty of siege workshops down out of everything right now. More archery ranges as well. We don't see that elite crossbowman upgrade just yet. Down towards the south, we still have got this gold mine. Plenty of relics out on the map as well that haven't been brought in just yet. And villagers now trying to wall up down here towards the south and prevent any of this potential, I guess, potential expansion down this direction. And players really looking to finish this one out against each other, but it doesn't really look like either player is going to be able to, to really put themselves in a position. I'm, I'm To be honest, at this point, I'm really feeling like Sniper is going to be able to win this one just simply because Longbows are difficult to deal with when it gets to the late game. They're a wonderful trash unit, but my only concern is that his wood is going to run out eventually. 
Whereas when it comes to Boyd, Boyd is now beginning to diversify. I mean, when I say beginning to diversify, he doesn't really have that many traders. Like, the, uh, you guys might think I'm joking. 23 traders is not enough. Like, you need, like, uh, I'm talking like 60 traders because you can just buy resources then. Like, it, it's absolutely fine to buy resources um, and you're going to have plenty of gold plenty of of food and you can make lances you can make crossbows you're going to be able to continue creating units but your enemy at some point he's going to be running out of resources you can see that there's plenty of food, uh, wood that's stacked up right here but there's nobody chopping it there's only two villages that are chopping right now out on the map you've got a, a you've still got plenty of wood out here in the middle of the map but this is difficult wood to fight over down towards the south there is a keep going up this is a keep that is going to be coming up way too late he does recognize that there is a gold vein potentially here but once again this is you know th this should have been something that was done 20 minutes ago to secure that gold vein now splitting is looking like it's going to begin and one of the things we haven't seen yet is that split um, plenty of units coming out for Sniper, and you just hear all those sounds going off. It, it sounds nothing like that. And look at this push happening for Sniper. Really going to be able to hold this one. And one of the difficult things is he's dealing with are these Bombards. Now, these aren't actually Clock Tower Bombards. They still don't have their Pyrotechnics upgrade as well. But this is... this is It's, it's one of those cases where it's just a really difficult spot for Sniper because he's dealing with these Bombards. But now going to be able to push up onto it. Keep going to be going down. Village is going to be going down. And this is when you know you've got a few too many villagers right here. Uh, yeah, hey, guys. Can, can you, um... Could you lend a hand? Uh, I, I just I just need to get in and mine some gold, guys. Uh, yeah. Yeah, me too. Um, that... You know, technically, you don't have any idle time doing this because you've always got villagers, like, gathering, I guess. Right? Like, surely? That's, that's, that's how it works, right? Now, towards the south, the push is really beginning. And this is the difficult spot. Sniper is now beginning to pull out in lead. We see that he's up about 400 points at this point. Villagers getting in on the action, pulling out their daggers. You see them down there. Let's get into that all-important uh, cinematic mode. There it is. You see the... Look at them fighting with their daggers right there. Say, you get off my property. I, I own a farm around the corner from here. My father was a farmer. I used to be a logger. Get off my... Oh! That, that's me doing the English dubbing uh, for the critically acclaimed cast of Age of Empires 4. Let's reset that camera. All right, there we go. Anyway, we're back. We're back. The villagers, uh, <laughs> the villagers are still out there trying to do their work. Uh, both players have now got that beautiful uh, upgrade for their archers. And Bombard's now beginning to push in as well. Now, he's not making Clock Tower Bombards when he really should be. Boyd definitely having a difficult time in the late game, but actually looking like... Oh, no, Boyd. Oh, no, Boyd. No, 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 no. Uh, this is the big... This is... This is massive. Okay, so Sniper's realized that he needs to start market trading. And he's dropped down three market... Okay, Sniper's gonna win the game. Like, the, the fact that he realized he needed to do this, and we compare that to Boyt, who still is not sitting on a super-duper high amount of traders yet, is, um, is really what... What's, uh, in my opinion, gonna seal it. So I would just delete all these... Ooh, look at his economy. Ooh, maybe, maybe have I called it too quickly? Have I called it too quickly? He's got no resources. He's got 51 idols. It's the classic macro right there. Um, and this is hard to deal with, all right? So you've got like one Lancer in the base. That requires so many APM, man. Because you got to... You send your like a single spear to go deal with it, it dies. So you got to spend like... Send two or three spears over to die. Or over to get it. But then it runs away from you. And then you lose line of sight. So they stop chasing and then it reappears somewhere else. And now you got to reallocate spears over to get there. And then you start cussing at it. And you're like, come on, man. I sent you spears over there. Why are you doing that? And look at this Bombard. Bombard, you know... You know that... <laughs> what's it, What's that mission... What, what's that movie about like the one... The independent woman? Like, you just know that this Bombard is driven by the independent woman. It's like, I don't need no army. I see a white castle. I take it down. <laughs> a white castle. It's a white tower. I see a white tower. I take it down. And <laughs> and it's going to do its best. Like, you know what? He could actually do a sneaky landmark victory. You, if you brought in like two or three bombards with like some, um, some rams as well, you could totally win this game. You've got one. This landmark's down. One, two landmarks remain. This landmark, you could, oh my lord, he could do that. Does, if he realizes that he could do that, he could win the game without even like having a fight. Take a look at all the villagers beginning to push up now towards the front. So many longbows going to be out here as well. He's got to be super duper careful because, oh my lord. The, it does go down, but boy, there's a will and there is a way. If we Let's take a look at landmark tracker. Two, four versus two. He could totally win. 
Oh my god, he needs to think outside the box. Boy, you can do it. You're down. Actually, you're not even down score that much. You're only down 200 score. And now we hear something getting fired off. It sounded like that. I think it was that upgrade that they they do. The, the arrow volley, yeah. You heard that sound. It sounded like the Khan firing off. And more units now coming in to reproduce. More units coming in to reproduce. They're getting in on the action. Getting in on the orgy. <laughs> more units coming in up from the reproduction facility. <laughs> from the production facilities. Oh, Lord. It's been a long game. It's been a long game. I, <laughs> I apologize. And now the military begins to move across the map. And it really begs the question at this point in time. Who is ahead? Because I see the scores. I see what's happening on the military field. But I just feel like... You know, at this point... Okay, now we've actually got Nesta Bees coming out. This this is like... Okay, let's let's watch. Watch. This is what I've been asking for. Here we go. The knobs are getting in on the action. They managed to dodge a couple of shots. Looking pretty juicy right there. Some nice little dodges. Changing, reallocating, and spotting up. Re uh, we've got capacity now. Being reached for Sniper is going to begin building up that economy. It's looking pretty decent at this point. Plenty of resources. He's literally long distance mining the middle. We've got villagers chopping each other's forests. You know, often they talk about, you know, China and... Uh, look, I probably shouldn't get into politics, but land disputes are something that are not a rare occasion in China. And it looks like Dry Arabia is no exception to it because villagers are now going to be migrating up towards the north, down towards the south. More villagers <laughs> hitting on trees that they shouldn't be. Sacred site still sitting here that hasn't been challenged just yet. Do we have... We still don't have any sneaky backdoor sieges just yet. I really want to see a sneaky backdoor siege. It can totally work. Wait, this landmark went down. What? This landmark is gone. He's got one landmark remaining. It's the town center. Nobody tell him. Nobody tell him. Boyd could win this. Boyd could win this game. He is like, he's losing on one front. But if he... Can he make... Can he connect the dots? Right, this guy is a big connect the dots player. If you guys have ever played connect the dots, you have to connect four dots next to each other, all right? And Boyd connected the first dot. He connected the second dot. He connected the third dot. And there's one final dot that needs to be connected. Can he connect it? Can he connect it? Is that connect the dots? Let's connect four. Drongo, you're a freaking idiot, man. Let's connect four. <laughs> Let's connect four, you crazy cat. What are you doing it to me? Now going to be... Pushing forward. <laughs> this is an hour. This is an hour long game. Holy moly. We have actually just reached an hour casting this game. Uh, and uh, look, I'll be real. I, I think probably close to 20,000 units have died uh, in this game. Maybe not that many. Maybe like 5,000 units, but it's been an awful lot. Bombard now taking aim at a couple of these units. Unfortunately, going the way of the dodo. Uh, more than, I love that this sacred site is still just sitting here uncontested. Another one down here to the south. Like, they they don't even see the sacred sites. There's just so much action. And what's under attack over here? Is that the, the trebuchet? The trebuchet is just, like, slightly attack moving forward, dude. Oh, my God. It's going to get there, dude. It's... Oh, I got packed up. Why would you remove the trebuchet? It was literally going to win you the game, boy. <laughs> it could have, like... It could have gotten to here and started shelling the town center. What are you doing to me, boy? Oh my lord, oh my lord, Sni uh, sn Sniper now beginning to bleed quite heavily, down to 180 unit population, still we don't see as many units on farms as we should, we see a lot of villagers right now that are out and about, but not enough villagers that are on farms, he needs to be getting more, and the now the tre counterweight trebuchet, gonna get found out, this, I don't know why he moved it, why did he move it? Now, on the back line, a little bit of damage going to be coming in. Boyd over here on this side. I'm really hoping he connects the dots. I'm really hoping he, play he connects four the way that he should. Now going to begin pushing out as well. More and more uh, units going to be coming in. Plenty of lances right here. These lances looking to come forward. We see the palings already coming out from the English longbowmen. Take a look at all those palings. Good luck to you, lances, he says. He actually moves out of the way. I think he's going to cancel those palings when he does that. Yep, yeah, we see that the palings do move after you've moved away from them. They do cancel. Nesta B is going to get go, go down, but uh, plenty of damage there. I think he probably could have taken that, but uh, deciding to fall back. We take a look at the population difference between these two. 34 military population. So Boyd just really fighting an uphill battle the entire game. If there was any point where Boyd could have stabilized here, he probably could have held a lot more easily. But now he begins to push through. We see this trebuchet just doing classic trebuchet things. Going to be sieging down an archery range for... Why not? Because that's, that's what trebuchets do. Oh my lord. Can you imagine if he was like, wait a minute. He has one town center. 
Come on, boy. You can do it. I believe. If you believe, you got to type in the comments of YouTube right now that you believe. And if you're on Twitch right now, I need you to type in the chat that you believe. I believe that boy will find. He will connect the dots. He will connect four. He will find a way to do it. You know what they say. If there is a will, there is a... Oh, there... There is a waypoint? I can't remember. Is it? There's a way? There is a way. He can do it. You can do it! <laughs> I believe, boy. I believe. You can find it. Find your win condition. Be the hero that you're wanted to be. Make your father proud. You can do it, boy. Nesta B is now... He's in a difficult spot now. It's not looking good for Boyd. You can see just how much of a difficult spot it is. He's under attack in so many different locations. Units down to the south. Units up to the north. Units pushing through the middle. Cleaning him up absolutely everywhere. You can tell he's losing morale as well because his village account is just beginning to dwindle. He's got 100 villagers right now, but they just seem to be doing absolutely nothing. You hear those Nesta Bees crackling off in the distance, but the Nesta Bees is going to be going down. A couple more now setting up, but they need that protection. Going to be get taken out by the Elite Spearmen. More elite spearmen now moving up towards these Nesta Bees as they look to get shots off on these longbowmen. They're going to be able to take out a couple of them, but unfortunately, they're going to be losing their, their battle. At the end of the day, more longbowmen now going to be moving up. I believe, boy, I believe. You can find it. You can find it. Does he actually find it? Uh, every minute that the game goes on, I think he's going to find it less. That one trebuchet that he had, man. That one trebuchet that he had, it was like a trebuchet in a dream. It was on attack move, did you see it? It was like here, and it shelled this down and this down, and then it was like slowly moving up to the wall, and it started like trebucheting this down, and then it was like, ah, oh, nah. Dude, there's two Springles just randomly hanging out for like the last, the last 47 minutes, just like casually, you know, minding their own business, down six pop the entire game. I love that Sniper is still microing his longbows at this point. We're, in it. We're 65 minutes into the game, and Sniper's like, hold on, I gotta micro these little longbows right here. A couple of crossbows in here getting mixed in as well now for Sniper. We'll take a look at how his economy is doing compared to Boyd. Let's take a look. And it is looking pretty decent. He's sitting up on 200 population. Plenty of gold in the bank right now. And you can see this is what I'm talking about. This is how many traders you need to have on this map. Uh, we take a look how many. There's 29 to this market. Uh, looks like there's 20. Is there 29 to every market? Did he really make that many traders? Surely that can't be right. 29 to each one. That's not 29. I feel, I feel like that's a lot though. I don't know. How many is Boyton? Uh, there. Boyton 23, it says. Alright. Oh, no. Nah. Oh, I thought he realized. He still has, you know, he still hasn't made, like, any infantry at all throughout this game. Oh, he's got a nice little connection, collection of, uh, connection. He's got a nice co collection of nest of bees right here. And th this is, okay, this is what I need him to get to. This is critical number of nest of bees. This is where you start one-shotting units. As you can see right here, the nest of bees just firing off. Oh my god, don't they? Get in there. Oh. Oh, it's so good. Oh my god. Turn your subwoofers on and just enjoy it, ladies and gentlemen. That is that is the true sound of the Chinese military right there. The nest of bees coming through. Not just any nest of bees. Maybe some clockwork nest of bees. Nope, no clockwork nest of bees. Oh my lord, dude. There's so much bass in that. Like, it's, it's, it's good. It is good. Uh, but the, the difficult thing is that there are so many fronts right now that he needs to fight on that he is in a difficult... Oh, this is looking potentially good here. Nesta bees need to fire in on these spears. How do they go? Let's take a look. Turn around, boy. Turn around. You cannot run away from this. There you go. Face your fears. No, boy, don't move forward. You're going to come on. No, don't let them get in close. Not like this, boy. Not like this, boy. Not like this, boy. No, he was so young. He didn't connect the dots. No, oh, boy. <laughs> Good game gets called. The sniper is victorious. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've enjoyed this game, make sure you leave a like on the video. If you've enjoyed this match, make sure you go check out Boyd. I'm going to leave a link in the description to his YouTube channel where you can find plenty more Age of Empires 4 content. Let's take a look at some of the statistics right here. Let's have a look at how many units were killed. 1,377 versus 1,052. Absolute insanity. Let's take a look at my favorite stat it's the average villager idle time. <laughs> 3 minutes and 15 versus 3 minutes and 48. Oh, these guys. These guys are funny guys. All right. Well, thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one.